48 hours, one poster. Let's start the clock. Whew. Listen, I only have 48 hours to design this time travel movie poster. Sometimes when you're creating a piece of key art or a poster, it can be incredibly time consuming and challenging to find the right images to help you bring your vision to life. And that's part of the reason why I'm gonna be capturing my own photos for this poster challenge. Because I wanna make sure I get the poses, the action, and everything I need to create an epic time travel poster. Hey, if you're new here, I'm Eric, a key art and brand designer based in New York City. And I create videos to show you what it's like working as a designer in the entertainment industry. So let's get started. I started off by looking for some inspiration. I started looking at films like Looper, like Tenet, and other time travel movies like Blade Runner to see what's already been done and what's out there as far as time travel movies, knowing that I wanted to create something different. Once I had about eight or nine different inspiration images, I decided that there were specific things I was looking for in each one. Now the goal is not to rip off any of these posters directly, but to take inspiration. Just like I said before, when it comes to creating posters like this, what can I take from this and how can I incorporate it in a way while still doing something a little bit different? I love seeing posters like Doctor Strange, which is of course an epic Marvel poster, but what I really loved about it is the shattered glass, the backlighting, the beautiful colors. And also on Project Almanac, I really loved the depth that was created in this poster by having these different objects kind of flying out towards the viewer, as well as the really nice light effects here. I also really love the Lazarus project. I wanted to figure out a way that I can incorporate the pocket watch or a clock in some way that would really convey the idea of time. Now, once I had all of my inspiration ready, it was time to dive in and set up my photo shoot. Now, this part of the process was really fun for me because I can set up the lights, I can get in the costume, have my pocket watch as a prop, and just start trying a different poses out, some different action. I really wanted to get something that felt dynamic and like I was coming towards the camera. I didn't just want this sort of static shot where I'm just standing there in a pose, or especially when your arms are folded or hands on the hip, those kind of things can be interesting depending on the type of poster that you want to create, but it's a little bit too static. And I wanted excitement. I wanted to bring energy, something to make it dynamic, and really come to life with the energy of the time travel aspect that I was trying to capture. So once we did this photo shoot, probably had at least 100 to 150 different photos, and I felt like we had covered a lot of ground. And I put all of the images on my computer. It was time to start going through and making my selects to pick the best ones that I wanted to incorporate in the poster. Next, let's get started on the design and head on over to Photoshop. Now that we're over here in Photoshop, the first thing that we wanna do is determine what size poster we're going to create. So to get started, let's think about typical one sheet or key art poster sizes. Sometimes you could work in a tabloid 11 by 17, but typically a one sheet is around 18 by 24 inches. But because we're just working on this poster for digital and it's not actually going to be printed, I'm gonna cut that in half. So we're gonna end up with a poster that's nine inches by about 12 inches. Now that we have our document set up, the next thing that I wanna do is pull in my favorite photos. These are the selects from the photo shoot. And something that I noticed when we did this is, and I guess this is sort of a learning or teachable moment for me, is that some of the photos, my face was out of focus, but the watch was nice and sharp. And in other shots, the watch was out of focus and my face was nice and sharp. So in order to work around this and rectify this problem, I'm going to create a composite of myself. The way that I like to do this is I will overlay one image on top of the other in Photoshop, try to line it up as best as I can, and then I'll apply an inverted layer mask and use a low opacity white brush to begin painting the areas where I want to reveal. And then I'll select the photo underneath and apply a regular mask and erase any areas that are popping out or showing through. Now doing this gave me a great, nice and clear image, but I realized that with this poster, I wanted to make it look like I was coming forward, like I'm jumping forward to capture that energy and motion, which meant that I also needed to have some legs. So I went back to my photo selects here. I pulled in a leg from one shot and I added it to the comp. I grabbed a leg from a different photo and I tried to work that in as well. And I even grabbed a piece of a jacket from a completely different photo just to try to make that full body composite.
Now, once I had this composite together, the next thing that I did was brought it over to Topaz AI. Now, I just wanna say that in my opinion, this is one of those AI tools that is okay to use because I'm using it as a tool just to up-res this image, to make it sharper, to try and do a bit of denoising and make up for some of that loss in quality that we saw from shooting in a low light condition with an iPhone. But after running it through Topaz, I had a nice full body composite of myself that I created from five different images from our photo shoot. I'm gonna start by building out the background. And I've used Photoshop's Gen Fill here once again in order to extend the sky. And in my opinion, this is an ethical and practical use of AI inside of Photoshop that can be used to make my life much easier. Knowing that I only had 48 hours to do this, I'm trying to use some of these tips and shortcuts and all the techniques that I can pull out of my toolbox. I already had some images prepped, so I'm starting to build the background to add some atmosphere. I'm adding bursts of light rays, I'm adding energy bursts, I'm adding some different landscape backgrounds and things like that, just testing out different elements and seeing what works. Now, as I go, I'm also trying to color match these. I'm keeping with the blue and the green color scheme that I had from that portal that I jumped through at the very beginning of this challenge. Now, one of the things that I did here was I tried adding a hat, I tried adding a suitcase, and then I realized when you're traveling through time, how often are you packing a bag? Maybe that doesn't make the most sense. We're gonna get rid of it and we're gonna keep going. Now, what I did here instead is I added some papers like Project Almanac, and these papers are scattered about, they're flying, they're creating energy and movement. And along with that pose of me reaching out, that is exactly what I'm going for. So now that I had those papers in there, I'm masking some out that are covering me to kind of keep them around the perimeters and the edges of the composition. And once I had these papers in here, I added some other dust, some light effects, some lens flares to really take it to that next level and add some polish. Now, what's really important here is the balance of everything, right? I want everything to feel nice and contrasty. So this means that I also brushed some light on top of myself in the composition here to try and create a nice light wrapping effect. I also darkened other parts to put it in shadow and make it look like I'm receding into space a bit more. Now, once I was happy with how all this looked, I decided to go ahead and add the title. So now that I'm starting to build out the title treatment for this poster design, I'm gonna select a nice futuristic and sci-fi looking display typeface that I can use here. I'm gonna play around with this a little bit and add some of those other nice film details like the credit block and the little ratings and icons along the bottom, as well as incorporating the actor names to the top of the title here. What we're looking for is a nice balanced composition to balance our type with the rest of the image. I'm also gonna pull in some of that color so that everything feels like it's nice and harmonious. Now, before I wrap this up, some of the last finishing details that I wanted to add here is knowing that this poster is called Fractured Point. I wanna create a nice fracture on the glass of the pocket watch. Now, I thought this would be a great way to really tie into the name. So I added some glass fractures on the face of the watch, kind of darkened underneath it to help those cracks pop out. And then I also added some shattered glass around the composition. Now, again, like you saw in the Doctor Strange example at the beginning of this journey and Project Almanac, these are some of the elements that I'm taking from that inspiration. Again, it's not about copying those posters exactly. It's about finding the elements that really speak to me here and that are gonna help me get the job done. So once I'm happy with everything, I'm gonna create a copy of all of my layers by merging them at the very top, converting it to a smart object and running it through with the camera raw filter. Now this is where the magic happens and you can add all of those nice little details like the shadows, the highlights, the color temperature, as well as adding some sharpness and texture to the final image. Now that the poster is done, the last step is to place it into a mock-up. Since I had a little bit of time to spare, I thought this would be a great way to make it even more professional and give it that last finishing touch. Thank you so much for coming on this creative journey with me. And if you wanna see more of my poster design tutorials, check out this video next. All right, creatives, thank you so much for watching. Keep designing and we'll see you in the next one.